Wow, wow, wow. There's me. I'm Chris. Wow. Here we go. Okay. So this is uh, the demo I made about an hour ago. Uh, I'm lying. I finished it about three minutes ago. <laughs> Very exciting. But uh, here's our little guy. Uh, he's made of icons. Uh, you know, so these are made of the Fluent UI icons. Uh, it's very exciting. Uh, we're in the preview mode right now, so we've got something set up where we hit edit, right? We've got these two uh, little buttons, right? And we can hit head, right? And that loads a different head icon, right? Or a different body and so on, right? And that's pretty cool. Um, and let's take a look at some of the code. And then we're going to talk about how we can improve some things. Because uh, one of the things before we look at the code, actually, I want to see, I've got one property here where I can imitate Bo Cameron's code. All right. Uh, so the idea is I've got these lists. All right. So I've got a bodies list here, which has these icons, and I've got a heads list right here. And this is what's informing, uh, you know, what's going on here when I hit these buttons. So if I want to imitate Bo Cameron's code, uh, you know, ironically I'm using PMPJS. So you know, whatever. All right. So let's refresh this thing, and so now we'll see uh, that we have this uh, delay of about three seconds, uh, just like uh, anything Bo makes, right? Uh, very unperformant, and that's the kind of thing we got. So let's take a look at what's happening there and how we can take a look at a pattern that I think could help you. Okay, so this is just a web part uh, that has no framework, right? So there's no React, none of that other stuff, right? So it's just a standard JavaScript, and it's pretty ugly because, again, I made it this morning. So let's take a look what we got. So we got a couple of hey, properties Chris. here. Yeah. Uh, could you scale up the fonts? Bo, Bo would use a bigger font, uh, by the way. Oh, so just. Yeah. Um, well. All right. I got nothing for that. Is that just. Here we go. How, how's you. that? Is that better? <laughs> that's, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty good. All right. That's pretty good right there. there. Okay. There we go. go yeah, that's good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, perfect. okay. So let's, uh, let's go out here. So now we come down here and we have this idea of, right, we're just storing things as strings. So I'm just going to go over this and we'll talk about how to make this a little better. Right, so we've got this idea. We've got you know our array of strings, which is just going to be that title property, which is the icon name. Uh, it wasn't obvious because I did apply a format. Well, if I could find that window um, on this list, right? But if we actually say uh, format this column, we can say all I'm really doing is I'm swapping in that icon name, right? So if we were to, and that was just so I made sure I typed the icon right. So you can see we're actually just typing in the name of the icon. That's actually what this field is: is the name of the icon. I've just again I put this here. Uh, to make it easier for me to see it here inside the list. So there's a, a list format demo for free. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. And all of these I pulled from, uh, you know, the Fluid UI icon. So you can go to flycon.io uh, right here, and you could find all these icons here. So, for instance, for all the faces, I just went to emoji, and there they are. All right. And so you can see they're named sad <laughs> and emoji and so on. And that's what I've got in this list of heads. And we've got something similar for the bodies list as well, right? So bodies has the same format. And it just has different icons, which are from the shapes category. All right. So that's what's going on there. But if we take a look at the code, then uh, you can see really all we have is a div and a bunch of icons here. Uh, just trust me, these are the styles that are required for the icons. And then these are the styles that are I'm absolutely positioning all those little body parts. Uh, top notch code there. Woo! But the idea here is right, we're swapping in and out based on our stored property, uh, what this is. And that's pretty cool, right? And then we're for in display mode, right? We're detecting that. We're adding those buttons or not, right? And then later we're hooking them up down here with our event listeners and so on. And so, and then if we come on down here, right, we've got these change head and change body. Uh, you know, again, those are just arrays. So all we're really doing is incrementing to the next one of the array. It's a really ugly way of just saying, go to the next one and so on. Same with the body. And all we're really, the key part is this, right? This properties body icon and the properties head icon. We're just updating those properties in our property bag. Wow, we Now, and then down here, we have this thing called long load. Right, and the reason it's long load is because I'm taking in, uh, into account uh, that Bo Cameron's code, right, where we're really just arbitrarily waiting, you know, three seconds before we actually load our stuff. Now, the loading stuff down here, um, I'm not doing any batching. I could, there, I do not do any caching, right? We can do a lot of stuff to make this even more performant. Uh, you know, take a look at that stuff. We've got lots and lots of samples on how to do that with PMPJS. Um, and if you're not using PMPJS, it, uh, what's wrong with you? Go and use it. It's awesome. All right. Uh, but the idea is here, I'm just awaiting those things, right? So I'm getting everything from the heads list and everything from the bodies list, and I'm just slapping the title into that array, right? Boom. 
and then I'm re-rendering this thing because it's not a reactor. I don't have any properties and that kind of stuff like that. So that's it. Load the stuff. Uh, this is some fancy stuff I was doing just to do some uh, style stuff. You can look at that later. All right, but down here, so that's what's going on. So a common pattern, so that's the setup. So a common pattern is, hey, I need to load some stuff from a list, right? Or I need to load some stuff from an API or wherever I need to go do some kind of process, right? I need to go grab that stuff. And I want to, you know, show the load user that I'm loading stuff. So maybe I use the loading indicator, or I get a little fancy and I, you know, get a little GIF in there, whatever it is, right? And maybe I'm saying, well, in my init, right? I'm going to go ahead and grab my loading thing. I'm just going to go ahead and catch that. Maybe I've got some promises, and so on. And when that happens, right, that gets run at the end. It's going to re-render, and we're going to have all our stuff, and it's going to be fancy. But here's the the scenario we've got, right? We only care about loading stuff from the heads and the bodies list when you're in the edit mode. Right, there's no point in loading this stuff. We've got this arbitrary three second delay right on our load, but imagine we really do have some kind of expensive operation where we're calling, you know, uh, an elaborate API, we're pulling a bunch of things in, and all of that's just for that edit experience, right? You know, maybe we're doing something with the property pane, but maybe we're not, right? We're doing that inline editing experience, we're getting real fancy, and that's cool, but when we're on the page, we don't need to load any of that stuff, right? So, how can we make that just a little better? Well, let's take a look at it on a page first, see it not so great. All right, so let's go to a page. There we go. Here's a page where I've got it on there. There we go. There's the little guy down there. You know, we load this thing, and we've got the uh, the bow camera delay. All right, so it's – but we're not editing anything, right? So there was no point to that delay. Why did we load that stuff um, if we're not actually editing, right? We already know what we want to display here. We've got it in the properties, and the nice thing about storing that stuff in the property bag is that's just gonna load up with your web part right on the page, right? There's no extra calls. It just comes in there and SharePoint Framework is gonna handle handling all of that to you. Um, and you serializing that out of the property thing. And that's cool, right? That's fancy stuff. So you wanna take advantage of that, right? You don't wanna necessarily load things every time. Uh, maybe just load things when people are editing and you need to go grab that data and you can use that property bag almost as a cache. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's go back to our code, which is one of these, this one, all right. And if we go up here, here's that key part of the code I mentioned here, right? That we talked about where the loading. So we're saying, all right, if it's not defined yet, all right, then we're saying display the loading indicator, and then we're not doing any of the rest of this, right? And then what we're doing here is because we have that in our initialization down here, right, where we're actually loading it, right? That's what's taking forever. So it's waiting for those three seconds before it ever stops showing. You know, it's going to re-render again, and then it's going to clear that out, right? It's going to clear that load indicator. All right, everybody with me? All right, good. So what we're saying is, hey, if you don't have these backing, uh, you know, objects here, I want you to, you know, show the loading thing, which is a good idea. But again, we don't need to do that if we're not editing. So let's change this slightly, right? Instead of loading things every time, let's do this a little more dynamically, All right? So instead here, we're going to say, you know, let's put that in parentheses. I'm going to say either of those are undefined but we only care if the this dot display mode all right equals equals display mode dot edit right so only if we're in edit and only if these things are undefined show the the indicator right and that's cool uh, but obviously this is is not great because we're still actually doing the work behind the scenes because we're doing the initialization so let's go down here Let's say, well, you don't need to be there, bud. Get out of there. That's crazy. All right, we'll just get rid of that, and we'll come back up here, and we'll just stick that right here. We'll say, hey, only load it, uh, you know, if you don't have the data yet, right, and you uh, are in display mode, go load this. Now, we could do some stuff here where we might want to check, you know, are we loading and so on. And again, you know, this is a, a quick and dirty uh, example of how we're just delaying and doing dynamic loading here. But let's try it. So let's save that guy. Let's see what difference we made on our page. Go back to our page. You'll remember that this has the uh, three second delay. So if we refresh this, oh, instantly loaded. Woo! But if we edit the page, we should see we have our arbitrary loading going on. So that's pretty exciting. So now what we've done is, right, we're only, and let's go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, get out of your bow. Gosh. Right, so now it's going to be fast either way, because really loading from list is not fast, and I don't mean to imply that it's not, right? So PMJS is extremely fast, especially if you had that batching and had that caching, but not all of your other stuff's going to be that fast. Okay, so let's review this, because uh, apparently we've got a 
a whole heck of a lot of time, but that's okay. We're not going <laughs> to delay this too much. Uh, what we did here, uh, to be clear, is we took our loading logic, right? Instead of doing the classic in our initialization where we're loading this regardless of what the state of the web part is or the state of the page, uh, we're deciding to do that based on the state of the page. And we get that from this display mode uh, property that's on your web part, right? And you're going to be able to check that against the enumeration, which is coming from uh, right here. So in the core library, you're just going to make sure you import that display mode. That allows you to say that display mode dot edit. And you're going to compare against that. And this opens up all sorts of interesting scenarios, right? To, to change how your web part renders, uh, what it loads, you know, you could dynamically load styles and other uh, libraries and things you need only in that edit mode, which really allows you to have that nice, clean, performant uh, view. So we're doing something very similar. Uh, oh, good. What's that? Someone unmuted? Hi. Okay, cool. Well, so we're doing something in, uh, similar in terms, like a real example of this. So we've got uh, the idea of trying to show our own page properties as a web part. Uh, because we wanted to really control how those page properties looked. So what we've done is we created a web part very similar to this. And what it does is it pulls all the things it wants to display out of the property bag. But when you edit the page, we actually refresh the property bag from the properties of the page. Right? So that allows us to quickly pull those things in, but only have to pull that data uh, when you're editing the page. And for everybody else, it's just uh, very, very fast uh, and pulls all that data in. And it's a really cool pattern. Uh, and that's all I've got for this pattern. I will try and wrap this up as a sample and get it over to Hugo and see if he can put it up in the, uh, the web part gallery so everyone else can draw their own little icon man. And that's it for me, David.